Hello grade 10 physical sciences learners or anyone interested in chemistry or physics itself. Welcome to my channel. My name is Miss Martins and today I'm going to be taking you through the classification of matter. But in the future, on this very channel, I'm going to be taking you through the whole grade 10 syllabus. Lots more where this comes from. Practicing past papers, preparing you for your exams. So subscribe and join me. Let's go. This is essentially your first module, your first topic in chemistry, and it's matter and materials. And we're going to discuss how to classify matter. So what is matter? Now, first of all, you might hear everyone say, or someone your science teacher might say, everything is matter. Matter is made up of particles. It's everything around us. They're not 100% wrong, but not everything is matter. You do get non-matter, which is more classified as energy, like heat from a flame, light from a torch. You can't hold these things. They don't have a mass, although this does get complicated. They don't take up physical space or volume as such, but they are energy. They are, they are not matter. So what is matter? Matter has mass matter has volume in other words it occupies a space so this pen is matter it's made up of particles it has a mass it has a volume it's occupying space and when we classify matter we speak about their properties properties of materials now what am i what do i mean materials substances consist of one type of matter like water is a substance it consists of one type of matter We'll get into what type of matter water consists of in my next video, but you just need to understand that substances consist of one type of matter. Materials are objects made out of matter, and they have practical use in our lives, like wood, right? Wood, that's a material, it's made up of matter, occupies space, has a mass. We're gonna be speaking more about specific properties of materials or of matter, namely strength, Thermal conductivity, ductility, malleability, electrical conductivity, boiling point, melting point, all these things, all these properties can be used to describe matter and they differentiate types of matter from one another. So what do I mean by strength? By the way, you need to know how to, how to define and explain these different terms. So strength is the ability to withstand an applied force. Like in the picture, you can see iron. We know iron is strong. Steel is strong. Iron is Fe, an element in your periodic table. Steel, we're going to be speaking about that in the next video, is a mixture. It's called an alloy. We also can define materials or matter as being thermal conductors or thermal insulators. So the word thermal, this over here, thermal. Thermal means heat. So a thermal conductor allows heat to pass through it easily, while a thermal insulator does sort of the opposite. It doesn't allow heat to pass through. So we know that metals are good thermal conductors. If you have a little metal kettle, metal kettle, and you put it on the stove and you want to boil the water, you cannot just touch the handle unless it's made of insulated material, of course. You don't touch the pan on the stove. That's because those are thermal conductors most likely metals, they conduct heat, so they allow the heat to pass through it. This is a very fancy equation that you won't learn now. You'll do it in AP Physics, if you do it, or at university level. And this is just how we can calculate thermal conductivity. And it depends on variables like the amount of heat transferred, the area, the temperature difference between the two sides of my substance material. Thermal conductors, as I've mentioned, metals. Non-conductors, also called insulators like wood, rubber, plastic. That's why you might have a metal pot, but the handles might be made out of non-conductors. Then we have electrical conductors or electrical conductivity. So like the thermal conductivity allowed the flow of heat to pass through, electrical conductivity allows the flow of charge. We know the flow of charge is electricity. So electrical insulators prevents the flow of charge. We do get semiconductors as well. And if we look at some examples, we can see again, our metals, our metals are our electrical conductors. You guys know copper wires, very, very popular to be used. Silver, aluminum, those kinds of things. Non-conductors again, like plastic, ceramics, 
all those things. Semiconductors, they can sort of conduct electricity. Those are our metals. So I will show you again in a later video, metals versus non-metals. Brittleness, it's basically something that's hard, but it's easy to break. Malleability, it can, it can stretch, it can be pressed or hammered, but it won't bend or crack. So if you look at the screen, you'll see aluminium, AL on your periodic table, AL. Aluminium is a metal. It is malleable. It has the ability to be pressed or hammered into a thin sheet. And you know that that's called tinfoil. We use that stuff. Gold is a very malleable metal. We can press it into thin sheets. And this is what makes gold and silver so good to be used as jewelry and things like that. Ductility is the ability to be stretched into a wire. Again, gold, silver, copper, copper wires, gold, silver, jewelry. Without the properties of malleability and ductility, being able to use these materials as jewelry or copper wires, which can be used in our everyday lives, it wouldn't be possible. Then we get magnetic versus non-magnetic. Everyone knows what a magnet is. It's on the screen. We get certain elements that are called ferromagnetic elements. Here we have iron, which is Fe, cobalt, which is Co, and nickel, which is Ni. Those are ferromagnetic elements. So they will experience a force when in the presence of another magnet. They have permanent magnetic properties. There we go. And we know that magnets have widespread uses in your electronics, in your telephones, in your compasses, in your motors. Very, very important. There we go. Our magnetic elements or materials versus non-magnetic. Density, one of our last properties that we're going to be briefly speaking about. Density is mass divided by volume. So how much mass you have per unit volume. So if you look at these pictures, the most dense phase generally are solids. Why? Because if these all have the same volume, let's say they all have a volume of one cubic centimeter, one cubic centimeter. In other words, a centimeter by a centimeter by a centimeter in dimension. And you see, you compare gas, liquid, solid, same volume. So V is the same. Solids have a greater mass per unit volume. So their density is higher. Water is an exception here. We'll, sp we'll speak about this later. Here's another one. Here's a really cool way to remember density. Mass, you see, it's like a little heart. Mass is the top of the heart. Volume is the bottom of the heart. I thought that was really cute. Last two types of properties, melting point and boiling point. And do you see these graphs on the screen? Your first practical generally in physical sciences and chemistry is the heating and cooling curve of water. So you will be studying this and being able to interpret this curve at a later stage. But all you need to know for now is that different substances, different materials, different types of matter have different melting points and boiling points. For example, we know that the boiling point of water is at 100 degrees Celsius. If you read off of this graph, there's boiling point. This is the boiling point. You'll be able to analyze this graph at a later stage. It's 100. But for alcohols, it's higher. These different properties that we've mentioned today, the nine that we've mentioned, we can use those properties to classify matter and materials. You need to be able to list them, define them, understand them, give examples. In the next video, what we're going to be doing is looking at how to classify matter. Matter can be broken up into pure substances and mixtures. So remember to subscribe so you don't miss that video. I'll see you guys then.